actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. The Marla and Dave Radio Experience begins in three, two, one. Now, if you're ready, we will begin. Welcome to the Marla and Dave Radio Show. This is reality radio with a couple that keeps it real. Current events, pop culture, music, relationships, fitness, the hot topics of the day. Marla and Dave Thomas. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Real radio. Turn it up! Welcome to the Marla and Dave Show. Did you like that? Huh? I like that. You know, I was looking right at your lips so I can make sure that we were together. So, is that why you were, were doing you looking that? at my lips? I wasn't. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, I, I was. So there was at just you. a coincidence that we said it together, huh? Can I tell you that that big S on your hat is kind of like a target? So I want to look at your lips, but what ends yeah. up happening is my eye goes toward the lip and shoots up to the S. This big S takes all of my money. Yes. So I understand that S means broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Syracuse <laughs> University. Suffering. <laughs> I work for them. Uh, well, and hey, welcome to the Marlon Dave Show. Welcome to the Marlon Dave Show. Um, today is going to be, I'm actually excited about today. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, one of the biggest miracles that ever happened to us. Why don't you mute your computer there, sweetie? Oh. Awesome. Oh, you Thank know you. What? I'm always in trouble. Anyway, let's get into the mood music. And this mood music today, I have to do a little quick introduction, is very significant. And I'll tell you why after you play it. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand to watch mm. the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Okay. I so love that, Pastor do you want Donnie my, McClurkin. Do you want my explanation now, or do you want to show we hear your, your music? Well, your makeup looks really pretty, so are you going to cry when you do your explanation? I, I'm not going to cry, but I did come a little close. Uh, yeah. Um, when our son was going through in the throes of his addiction, and I, I really did feel like there was nothing as a parent, and if you're a parent, you understand that kind of love is so much greater than you and what you want more than anything is to be the one to save them from what you know is impending doom um, from the choices that they're making for their own lives and you can't and I, I laid on this song I was prostrate in prayer with this song because there was nothing else I could do but just stand and ask the Lord to be the one to deliver I Period. know exactly what you're saying Tony hit me look at me Well, so hey, you know what? After you laid prostrate and had to stand anyway with God's help, you can turn it all around, you're set free. That's that, what God does. So true. that's that's my song. That's my mood. I'm going to have a little quick happy moment, though. I want to do a quick question for you, Dave. You know, for those of you who are joining us, you know that my look is a little different. What What's your choice, Dave? Would you prefer braids or my hair short and curly? You now, I'm looking around the studio at our guests because my thing is, we all know that's a trick question. Now, if no, I Dave. say I like one or the other, I'm in trouble. <laughs> so with the one minute that we have left, I want to say that, you know, today we are joined by... You're not answering. No, I'm not going to answer that, no. Okay. Did you notice that how sure. I'm just kind of going right past that? I want to be clear. We are joined by the founders and owners of the Drug, drug Alternative Program. Yeah. D-A-P, Clifford and Freddie Harris, uh, they're here in studio with us today, and they're going to share some really good stuff with us, and as well as Tracy Wise, a graduate and a supervisor over at D-A-P. Welcome to the show. We're going to have a great conversation. We're going to ask some serious, hard-hitting questions, and we're going to be informed. And we hope that we can help all of you. Uh, we've asked many people, um, th we've put this show out so by all means if you have a question and something's on your heart call us at 323-284-7826 and get your answers for yourself we're here for you okay we'll be back 
You're listening to the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. Current events, pop culture, the hot topics of the day. It's time for Mad News on the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Marla and Dave. Okay, we're right here. We just ended an election. And here's the thing. This was the lowest voter turnout. I believe it was like 28% for a midterm it was pretty election. Low. It was pretty low. So my question is... Two-thirds of the voters stayed home. We, Right. And 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 when we, when it was time for the presidential election, celebrities came out by Beyonce, the Beyonce, Jay Z. I don't know any Madonna, celebrity that wasn't out had a commercial, infomercial, just everything saying, "Hey, get out the vote, rock the vote." All that was going everything. on. It was on MTV. It was on ETV. It was all over. You couldn't turn around without somebody tapping you on your shoulder and saying, "Hey, guess what? You should vote." Now here's the question: Was that for a political? Uh, a love that they have to just encourage everybody to vote or was that just for Obama? I really that's the, a good question and and I think that the answer uh, might be clear because for two terms we were the all of the celebrity involvement allowed the young people to be um, invested in voting and I think that now people are kind of just sour and especially our young people they feel like it doesn't even work like it, it's like investing in something that you want to return and what's really happening. So there's so much gridlock right now going on in Congress that what's the point? So I think young people are like, you know what, is this whole process really worth it? So that's kind of where that's where I'm going to leave it. And it's a good question because I wonder if we get more celebrity involvement. Will you get more people out to the polls even on a midterm? Because they're always a little bit lower. Join us at www.marlindave.com. This has been the Mad News. Handle the truth? Then get ready for a real radio experience. Real radio experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Marla and Dave. So All right, we're going to get the party started. We are. And like we said, we're, we're welcoming with us today in studio Mr. and Mrs. Harris. Clifford Absolutely. and Freddie Harris. And, oh. <laughs> you, you, you don't want me to use the Mr. and Mrs. just... Oh, Cliff. make sure, make sure, yeah, uh, cousin you Cliff, you talk directly into the mic. So yeah, or now you can actually extend that arm towards you, so you can sit comfortably. Yeah, but just, just Cliff, just okay. use, use Cliff. Well, allow me to give a proper introduction, and the introduction I'm going to give my uh, illustrious cousins, uh, Clifford and Freddie Harris, are the co-founders of the Drug Alternative Program. They have owned and operated two men's recovery homes in a transition home in Grand Terrace for the past 27 years. Wow. The 12 to 18 month residential program provides a safe, structured and supportive environment for men ages 18 to 64, addicted to drugs through mental, physical and spiritual education, helping them to return to society as valuable citizens. Wow. Well, yes. First off, um, publicly, I want to, it's, it's, you guys know our gratitude, but it yes. is this very program that is part of the miracle of our son's recovery. And, you know, it really is a miracle. It's a miracle. It I, really I, is a miracle because Dave was not, Dave Jr. Right. Was really. He was in deep. Yes. <laughs> he was down the rabbit hole. Yes. And it's and not a laughing matter, but I'm laughing hard, right now. It was hard working with him. Yeah. But. We took him through the storm, and he weathered the storm. Hmm. And that's what it takes. You got to weather the storm. Hmm. There's got to be pressure applied to the addict. Hmm. And if there's no pressure, why should I change? Everything is comfortable. You know, you take care of me. I got a place to sleep. I got Hmm. a place to eat, and I can manipulate you and, Mm -hmm. you know. So, Clifford, I have to ask you. I have to start right here because there's a lot of people in several communities that I'm a part of online. Um, mm-hmm. that, are, that are loved ones who, even a, a, a group that's moms, directly about moms who have addicted children. Um, and I've asked all of them to tune in today as well. What is your story? In, it, briefly, if you can just tell us, as an addict that came all the way to recovery to actually bring this program. Well, um, I started you in doing drugs when I was about 21. I was married, had uh, three children. Okay. And um, I bought a home when I was first married at 21. 
My ex-wife, she could not sign. I had it together. But in the marriage, I felt that she didn't love me. Hmm. You know, I, like I said when we were talking here in the show before we started, I felt I couldn't be me. Right. And so, therefore, I started using drugs. I got heavy into it. Um, I had a $200 day habit on heroin. I've been in the Colorado State Penitentiary twice. Wow. I've been in jail, California, Texas, Florida, Ohio, New York, Colorado. Um, so even you're even having... See, this is this. Is, I don't think I, we've talked many times, and I know you mm-hmm. have a book um, that that talks about your story. And, and what's the name of the book, by the way? Death Dance. The Death Dance. Well, okay. Let me let me see it right quick, please, Freddie, so everyone can pay attention. Um, Death Dance. Yes. The you, story of my cousin Clifford Harris. So, yep. I the question that I have is usually like with our son, there you're very young when you start drugs so you there, you don't have that that cognitive awareness even having three children that didn't deter you was it just you that wasn't enough no it wasn't enough i had a home okay i have a trade i'm a brick mason by trade so i didn't have a problem of working and making good money and taking care of the family but i wanted to run run with the guys wanted to be one of the fellows with the rest of the guys and I can remember when they introduced that marijuana to me. I got upset. What are you guys doing smoking that dope, you know? And I wouldn't let you smoke in my car. I wouldn't let you drink in my car as a teenager and, and wasn't raised that way. But I wanted to be part of. So I started smoking the weed, and I went from, from marijuana into heroin and, you know, shooting up the needle and... Uh, Wow, that's a massive step. Yes. Was that a big? Was that a direct step from marijuana directly to heroin? Yes, direct. But I so with I no did cocaine other things, or anything in between. Yeah, I did other things like uh, pills. You know, uh, I call them fender benders. Hmm. You know, you're taking all these pills like they were M and M candies, hmm. and you'd be side side swiping cards and running into cars hmm. and wow. all that kind of stuff. So that was my lifestyle for twenty years. Wow. 20 years of it, of, of the, the drugs. So, you know, I, I finally, you know, going into the Colorado State Penitentiary twice, and I really looked at my life. And you know what I thought about, because I was raised a Christian, mm-hmm. you know. My father and mother always took us to church, and, you know, we always had worship in the home. So I didn't come from a dysfunctional family or a broken home. Right. And I used to ask myself, I remember this happened to me one day. I was, went down to the streets to cop my drugs, and I was going back home to get down. Hmm. And I pulled over, I'll never forget this, it was on St. Paul and 26th Avenue. This is a residential neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And you could park, people parked, cars were all down the street. And there was a parking space. I pulled up, backed into the parking space. This is one where I was living. And I sat there in the car, and I was talking to myself. I says, Clifford, why are you doing these drugs? What is the problem? What, what's causing you this? And I thought about, I couldn't blame it on my parents. I couldn't blame it on my childhood. And I sat there in the car. I said, it's my wife. It's her. That cow. It's her <laughs> fault. Hmm. I, I'm serious. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking out loud. I got my druggers in the car. And that cow, I didn't call her the other name. Right, right. But I called her a cow. It's your fault. It's you. You're the reason why I'm doing these drugs. See, we addicts always got to have a reason. Okay. We got to have a reason. Why am I doing this? What's the reason? And I came up with her. It was her fault. I remember one time when we were later in years that the marriage was breaking up. I mean, I was terrible. I had my hair was on my head like this. I would go two and three weeks at a time, 
not even changing my underwear. Wow. Not, not even changing clothes. Underwear crusty. Do you hear me? Yeah, that's mm. pretty crusty. Yes. That's standing up on their own. I mean, this is the truth. I'm telling you like it was. And I told her one day on the phone, you know, when you you know when you're arguing back and forth in your marriage, she says something and I say right. something and it comes back and forth until finally I said to her, you know what? If I saw you lying in the ditch mm. and you was bleeding, I'd spit mm. on you and <gasps> keep on going. I said it to her. Wow. Is that a reflection of how you felt she felt how about I you? I felt about her mm -hmm. because I blamed her. Mm -hmm. You're the reason why my life is all messed up. It's you. But see, you have to come to a point, and I want to say this to any addicts out there that's listening. She did not put a pistol on my head and made me do those drugs. Mm. That was my choice. That's what I chose. I don't mm. care what comes in your life, what difficulties you have, what goes on, that's not a reason to go start using. Well, Cliff uh, and Freddie and Tracy, we'll get to you in a minute. But when we come back, uh, Sandra Hawkins in our uh, chat group wants to know uh, how old you are. Uh, oh, so, right now? Yeah, right now. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> how old am I, Freddie? I'm 74. 74 years yes. young. And, and we want to find out what Tracy's rock bottom was is when we come back from this Absolutely. break. Absolutely. And so remember, call us at 323-284-3875. You can join us on Instagram and Twitter, The MND Show, or Facebook, The Marla and Dave Show. But certainly always stop by our home, marlandave.com, www.marla and no ampersand, dave.com. When we come back, we're going to continue the discussion with the Harrises and with our friend Tracy Wise. You don't want to miss this. Hey guys, listen up. Learn something. 26 years of marriage from two unique perspectives equals 52 years of relationship experience. It's time for Ask Marla and Dave. Answers to your questions about life, love, and relationship based on Marla and Dave's real life experience. It's about to get real. Ask Marla and Dave. Every time I hear that stinger, I want to call Haller and Hilton Hill up and smack him. 56 years, seriously, Hal? Anyway, so here's the Ask Marlon Dave. This is a big shout out, by the way, to the mad real talkers. David Absolutely. And I, David and I have a group in Facebook called Real Talk with Marlon Dave, and I've taken this question from the group because I think it's pretty interesting. Um, Nikki writes, and she writes a lot, but this is a question that we're going to address today. Um, she says, I know everyone has issues going into marriage. But how much of your issues and problems are you supposed to dump on your spouse? I used to be under the impression that a spouse was supposed to love you through your pain and hurt. But I've also come to realize that some issues can be too much for a spouse to bear and can ultimately ruin a relationship. At what point should a spouse encourage the other person to seek professional help? And should this conversation be had? I think the conversation should be had before you get married yep. because a whole marriage can only be entered into by, by two, two whole, whole individuals. People. That's number one. And if you're in a marriage and there seems to be some dysfunction, professional help, seek it immediately. And well, not the to mention, sooner the better. And, and don't hide. Like, in other words, keep that open line of communication and you need to say, look, I've got these issues, but I don't want to straddle you with them. But what encourages people not to hide is for you to always maintain an open and loving heart towards your significant other. Yeah, don't throw maple uh, sausage at them if they miss their cue with <laughs> the clock. I actually like uh, uh, vegetarian sausage. Yes, except so I'm the one that... Throw them at me. Right. I'll, I'll eat them up. We Let's know. ask Marlon Day. We back know. to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Marla and Dave radio show. Marla and Dave want to talk to you. Phone lines are open at 323-284-7826. 323-284-7826. Now, we said when we come back, we were going to ask the question, should all addicts expect to relapse? But even before we do that, I have a question that as Cliff was telling the story, uh, Freddie, what? as he was painting the picture, that seemed pretty grim. Uh, what made you say, you know what, I'm attracted to this guy. This is the guy for me. I really didn't choose him. I had chosen 
to spend a year <laughs> with the Lord without dating anyone, just to really get to know the Lord and have a relationship with Him. And hmm. during that time, hmm. you know, that one year I was spending with the Lord, Cliff was in prison spending one year with the Lord. So he brought us together. Neither one of us was look, were looking for a husband or wife, but he brought us together. And I met him on Saturday. He proposed to me Sunday. Wow. And three months later, we were married. Are you, well, you serious? Whoa, 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 whoa. Back up. <laughs> no, 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 we're cousins and I didn't no, no. know that. No, it no, It was no. a one-day no, dating experience. Stop. One day. Stop. Wow. Everybody, everybody stop. In your chat room. Stop. Stop. <laughs> everybody stop moving. So you said yes. Yes. So on Saturday, uh, Tony, Did you I, actually hear I the voice talk. of God say, this is the no, one? No, no, yes. no, no. Did God show up in the room? Because, I mean, did, was there like this whole halo kind of well, thing? Well, to make us a, 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 the long story short, when Cliff walked in church and he saw me, the Holy Spirit impressed him, impressed him she's the one. And not knowing that he had been impressed, I met him the next Saturday night. He came to my house, and when he gave me one red rose, the Holy Spirit impressed me, saying, he's the one. Okay, so how long have you been married at this moment? 29 years. Oh, Ooh. whoa. Wow. <laughs> Yes, and everybody said it would not work. Cliff was going to go back on drugs. I was making a mistake. In fact, I had so many negatives, I decided not to marry Cliff. Because my friends were against me. Well, you decided pastor. for three months. and then you No, said, no, 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 no. I just decided for one day. And that night, by the end of the day, that, by, and that night, he was back to yes. And that night, the the uh, the the Lord gave me a vision, and in that vision, He said, "If you don't marry him, he might be lost." And I said, "Okay," because I spent a whole year with the Lord. I knew wow. His impressions. I said, "Lord, I trust you. I know you, and I'm going to go ahead and marry him." That's what. Okay, I did. so it's been uh, the th best years <laughs> of my life. Now, from, from this day forth, don't ask Marlon Day but anything. But wait ask Clifford and Freddie. We're but, gonna but we're gonna wait. have to ask you guys have you guys back to discuss the marital perspective <laughs> okay, because that's right. something completely different. Right. Today we're we'll talking be glad about to DAP. Do that. Okay. No. I mean, well, that's some but serious stuff. we are stuff. an exception to the rule. <laughs> no, yes, you are. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, I know that. Yeah, wow. Okay. So, I, we, so before before we get to Tracy, and we're going to get to him in a minute, Cliff, during that time period, uh, did you have times when you were clean and then you relapsed? No. So did you no. ever relapse? No. Once you, oh, wow. No. So let me ask Tracy, is, is that your experience as well? No, I re relapsed. Okay. And after eight years, I relapsed and... Uh, I came out to the program in 2000, mm -hmm. um, got married in 2005, and I relapsed in 2008, hmm. and I was divorced about 2010. Hmm. So, yeah, I relapsed for twice. What was once. your... Relapsed uh, once, right, but yes. you were in, attended the program and graduated from the program and graduated twice. graduated from the program twice and, and worked for the program twice. Okay, so now explain that. What, what caused you to relapse? You were clean eight years before eight you relapsed? Years, yes. Hmm. Uh, what happened was, you know, like I said, I don't blame anyone. Like Miss hmm. Harris say, you know, I was married and uh, I had a Christian wife. Yeah. Um, I think I got married too soon. Hmm. I, I think uh, I wanted to go in and uh, control rather than go in and love. Hmm. You know, I, I was in love with her, but at the same time, I wanted things a certain way. And when they didn't go that certain way, then I got angry. You know what I'm saying? And when I seen that she was a strong person herself and then God, um, my anger didn't work. So I. I chose to go back to drugs. Let me hmm. go back to deal with this anger the best way I can. Now, you know? is that because you felt like you had undealt with anger the first time you went through? So is it important to actually deal with all of those issues? Most definitely. I didn't deal with a lot of things because I didn't, I didn't like rejection. Hmm. You know, and, and uh, when I started to get rejected by the woman that said, I do and I love you forever, then I felt like, wow, I don't like this. It's not comfortable to me. So let me do something about it. And what do I do? I go back to what's comfortable, and that's drinking and drugging. Wow. You know, but I didn't drug do crack right off, but I started, started drinking. You know? I was going to ask you what your drug of what your drug of choice. When I say choice, what is the drug that took you to your knees? Uh, crack took me to my knees, but I started with alcohol when I was 13 years old. Okay. Mm. And that was that was the love of my life at first. You know, but when I met crack, I really fell in love. Hmm. You know, and uh, that was my everything. That was my my mother, my father, my girlfriend, my children, that was everything I had. The I most everything. important wow. thing to everything, you. Everything, yes. So now that's the, a couple of different perspectives. So we have people who have told us, you know what, well, if somebody's a drug addict, they're going to relapse. That's just part of the cycle. You know, Dave, I think the Lord did something special for Cliff, hmm. but Cliff has not relapsed. And I said, I think that the Lord took the taste away from him giving him this ministry hmm. and not having to deal with that because he hmm. definitely is an exception to the rule. 
And that's what my take is, that the Lord did something special for Cliff because of this ministry he chose for us. Well, Cliff, do you, do you agree? I agree. I agree because sometimes I stop and think, what if I had never done the tr program? And you know what I used to do? Hmm. See, when I got out, I was right in the same old environment. I was in Denver. I know to go down on the streets to cop. I knew all the drug addicts. I knew all the dealers. I knew everybody. And I, this happened to me one day. We got time and I can tell this little short. Yeah, little, sure, I'll go ahead. A little short. Yeah. I would go down on Five Points at that time in Denver, and that's where all the drug addicts hung out. That's where we would stand up beside the building waiting for the dealers to come by to get drugs. And this, this I'm clean now. I'm married to Freddie. Hmm. I'm not messing around no more. I'm not getting high anymore. I'm not using. And uh, I go down to the streets and... I'm standing up there, and this girl I knew named Bernadette, she wanted me to take her to this house to cop. And I says, okay, I'll take you. I'll take you. And I took her. She went upstairs, went to the house, got the drugs. I sat in the car. Now, before when you're using, I wasn't, like, nervous of the police on the corner. Right. Are they watching us? Mm -hmm. Is the house being watched? Am I getting excited, you know, in the drug? I'm just there. She gets the drugs. We come back. We go to her place. And I don't know why I went. I don't even know why I took her. Hmm. We went in the house, went upstairs, and you're sitting there. And she brings the Coke out, and she puts it on the glass and lining it up. And I'm sitting there. Now, before, you're sitting there, and you can't breathe. You can't wait. You're all excited. Right. But none of that happened. I sat hmm. there, and I looked. And finally, I just said, I'll see you, babe, and got up and left. Hmm. That see, was I a testing get, moment. Right. I, I, I I don't, it was. It represented the desire gone. Right. Yes, the desire, the natural desire. But it was wasn't. Gone. It wasn't that I was testing myself. I don't. Uh, to this day, I don't know why I even took her. Right. Mm. The Lord was testing you. Yeah. But I <laughs> came out and I said, and never went before it again. So now, never. Now, Tracy, uh, as far as you're concerned, do you? Uh, when you're talking to some of the guys in the program, do you say, you know, be careful because more than likely you might relapse? Well, is know, that the usual? Because we're saying that Cliff is abnormal. He's extraordinarily <laughs> sure. uh, blessed. You know, it, no, Dave, it's always a possibility you can't relapse. But the thing about it is once you make your mind up, you know what I'm saying? And I, like I said the first time, I don't, I, I believe my mind was made up, but at the same time, it, that, that in the back of your mind, it always sits there. You always have that... Um, that comfort that way I can always go back to if you don't really deal with the issues. But when I talk to the men, I always let them know. I always tell them my story because that's the best example I can give them. Mm -hmm. And uh, to always let them know, hey, be careful of your surroundings. You know what I'm saying? If you can change your playground, your toys you play with, and your playmates, you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's how I look at it today. You know what I'm saying? All that's changed for me, you know, and um, it's no longer I, I was getting clean for for people to see me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My cleanness today is, 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 is for God. You know what I'm saying? And, and what I do is all for him. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to ask this question, and um, if you guys can't get to the answer, this is for everybody. We'll get back to it as soon as we, we return. Yeah. Sandra Hawkins wants to know from all three of you, um, she said, are there any lingering effects, either physically or mentally, um, of your extended drug use? So we're going to answer that question when we come back. It's time for the oh. Marla and Dave Roll. Oh, no. <laughs> Marla has something that should put Dave in the doghouse. Dave has something that should put Marla in the doghouse. You decide who gets a biscuit and who gets busted and ends up in the door. Uh, Let me stretch for this one. Yeah, well, Mar right, I'm starting Marla today. needs to stretch because, you know, I'm she's starting. been in that doghouse. She's been cramped in there for three weeks. Has yeah, I've been, been in the doghouse for three weeks because wow. you, you just talk too fast. But here's the deal. <laughs> the, this is why Dave needs to be in the doghouse. When Dave has a need... That in our house, i.e., toilet paper. <laughs> Why must you investigate at the time that the toilet paper is out? And when you need it, and I'm there for you, you can just say, Honey, can you bring me new toilet paper? Not mm, yeah. sitting on the toilet and going, Jeez, 
Who used the last toilet paper? It doesn't matter. It's when I use the bathroom first thing in the morning and I need toilet paper. Uh, The house is asleep. I'm the only one awake. So that's when I'm like, oh my goodness, why? And if you use it up, courteousness says, okay. courtesy says, hey, let me just replace it. So Dave, I know I'm the one who used it up. Dave needs to go to the doghouse for um, useless interrogation on his family. Okay. What's, your, well, what's your doghouse uh, offense? Uh, my my doghouse, uh, my vote for Marla to be in the doghouse, my appeal is that um, st- still dealing with time. We, we do our, our program, and I'm sure you guys enjoy it. Uh, but up until the time we were about oh. to come over to the studio today to bring the show to you that's so fun, so entertaining, so informative, Marla was still working on our presentation for today, our document. And our deadline is usually Thursday. Dave doesn't need to be mad at me because so I'm So anyway, <laughs> again, you can vote for Marla or I to be in the doghouse, but I suggest you give Dave the biscuit, put Marla back in the doghouse. Please let I'm me just out. saying. Marla, what, what's your, what's your last-minute appeal? <laughs> Please let me out. Oh, puppy dog eyes do not count. <laughs> so I'll be uh, Tony, Sandra, hook me up. <laughs> what, what, what's the action? You'll laugh. <laughs> You'll learn. Huh? You'll, learn. <laughs> You'll get mad. <laughs> Shut up. You'll get happy. <laughs> but you won't be bored. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. So let's come right back to the answer. From the three of you, and and this is interesting because Freddie, you've never used, but you're around. Well, you're married to yes. an ex or a recovered, totally recovered addict, and you're around addicts all the time. What would you say, Tracy and Clifford, are the lingering effects of your extended drug use? Uh, well, for me, you know, um, I noticed myself for myself that, you know, when you're driving, and mine was mentally, you know, and I noticed when I was driving, uh, the light can be red. Or it can be green, but I see different. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm not used. You no, know, I'm used to knowing green is green and red is red. But I can pull up to a light and it's, and it's green. It's for me to go, but I'm seeing red. Or I have gotten to the point where I forgot how to spell my own name. You know, wow. and, and spelling trace is easy. You know what I'm saying? But I have actually forgot how to spell my own name. So you have. So is that a short? Would short you term say memory short-term loss? memory? Yeah, I would say that. Yes. Hmm. And how about you, Clifford? Same. Memory loss. I cannot remember. A lot of names. Sometimes in the program, I can't think of, let me see, your name is, hmm. and I can't get it, and I'll say Jack. Hmm. But it's, my memory loss is from, I think, from the marijuana, or whatever, whatever the reasons, but I, that's a, that's a big part of, of um, the, the thing for me. I want to say that Cliff still has drug addict behavior. Hmm. I mean, he's gone from drugs to food, you know, he still, you know, overeats or he'll overdo something. So he still has that behavior. Hmm. The compulsiveness the, is really yeah, the, the, the I, foundation I of drug yeah. 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 like right addiction. I'll send him to the grocery store. I said, honey, would you get me uh, a loaf of bread and, and some milk? He'll get me two gallons of milk and two packages. I said, I only wanted one gallon of milk and one loaf of bread. Yeah. He will get, his thing is <laughs> He's going over the top. <laughs> yeah, he'll get lots now. Freddie, can I huh. help your marriage just for one second? Dave is not a recovered addict, but he too Doesn't has that problem. Really. Okay. Well, so, I was going to say, compulsiveness well, might be yeah. the root. Right. Well, maybe that's family. That's yeah, you know <laughs> what? Hey, I love me some haystacks. <laughs> but let me just say this. Uh, let's let's turn this back toward DAP because uh, DAP is going to be our charity of the month, the Mad Charity of the Month. We want you guys to understand how successful a uh, recovery program this is. And what do you think separates uh, your program from others? I think... You know, it's more than just getting off drugs. Mm -hmm. We deal with the mental, physical, spiritual, emotional person, the whole person. Mm. You know, we have a vegetarian diet. We have a schedule set up like everyday living. These guys get up in the morning. They do their chores. They have worship. Uh, they go to work. They come home. Then they have their therapy sessions in the evening. So if they if they follow this same pattern that we have, Mm -hmm. it'll work. So in in the whole center of our 
uh, program is Jesus. Hmm. You know, you've got to have a personal relationship with Jesus. You cannot get off drugs by yourself. Hmm. And and so our, our now motto, some people might argue with that. Well, our motto is Christ leads us to help you. We'll lead you to Christ for help. And you hmm. can ask Tracy. Okay, when you when you uh, regress the first time, what was the first thing you stopped doing? Well, I stopped doing my Sabbath school lesson. That was the first thing I stopped hmm. doing, and uh, I stopped praying after that. And eventually, I stopped even going to church. You know, right. even when I got high, I come in. On Sabbath morning, and I tried to rush to go to go to church. You know, that was one issue with my wife and I, mm. right. because I wasn't going, and she was. You know, yeah. and she would have to cover for me while I'm not at church, and I'm a deacon. You know, mm. so and that that's thing. that's key to us mm. is helping them to develop right. a personal relationship with Christ. Mm. Now, Cliff, what, what, what do you, you have to you, say about that? You know, uh, my thing is, I, you asked about the program. What yeah. is different from the program yeah. from other programs? I think the structure of our program. Mm. You know, I wanted Drug Alternative Program to be the Yale of all programs. Hmm. I wanted it to be the Harvard. top Harvard. Hmm. This is the top Ivy League. program. Yes. Do you know our our um, success rate is how much is it, Freddie? 60 to 70 percent. If they graduate. Hmm. Right. And the national is like 16 to 20 percent. Hmm. Wow. So our program is very structured very disciplined i tell this to them on over the phone mm -hmm. don't come here if you're not ready we addicts know if we are ready don't come for your mama don't come for your wife or mm. your children or the dog or the cat mm. you come for you mm. this is about you yeah it's almost like when you come to make a change you got to change how you think you got to change how you deal with other people and anger is one of the worst things that we got going because we're angry. You tell me one drug addict hmm. that likes his life, hmm. they don't like their life. No way. So but let we, me. We I have was, a phone I, call right quick. Let's, uh, if you can hold that, Marlon. Let's get to the phone call and uh, call you on the air with Marlon Dave. Hello, are you there? Jimmy, now this is DJ, your son. Hey, oh, Dave, what's up, buddy? David. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, guys. What so, are you doing, son? How's everything? He's he's still my son. Too. Oh no, we co-parent. <laughs> <Yeah>. Trust. <laughs> yeah. We co-parent. Yeah, I'm, we. I'm, we I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. You 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 know how it is. I got two dads. Uh, no, hey, <laughs> hey. The, the we, more you know the what? merrier, buddy. DJ, I will say this: that we welcome that because when you were reborn, God did definitely hook you up, exactly. and give you a set of spiritual parents, and and we accept them. Absolutely. Yes. We co-parent. Exactly. I want to say something to the audience. Okay. Guess where this young man is today? <laughs> guess. Can anybody guess? I, oh, I think I might know. Well, I you might know? I got an idea. <laughs> I know you know because you mama. <laughs> you guys can't guess. You guys can't guess. <laughs> D, guess. where are you right now? I am in my dorm room. In your dorm room? But at, what at, school are what you school in? are you going to? Oakwood University. All right. Hallelujah. And, and this is your what year? Third. The junior year. Right. Junior year, so now, heading toward graduation. So this is a good. This is a good question. Now that I have, we have David on the phone. I was just about to ask you, what is your intake program? And this is important because I know that we recognize that he had a problem when he was eighteen. You came to our home. We called. He said he was ready, and he ran. But you eventually, he did. He was accepted into the drug alternative program. But yes. you said at the time. We don't know if we want to take you because you're too young. Yes. So what for those listening, what is the criteria? How do you get into DAP? Well, see, we're licensed here in the state of California for anyone from 18 to 64. Okay. But when a young guy is 19, 20, I don't want you to tell me nothing. I know it all. Um, I'm in, not in charge. I'm in control of my life. I know what's happening. No, you don't, brother. Hmm. And so I'm not willing to listen or take the discipline or the authority of someone telling you what to do. And they're that young. And they're, they're not that young. They haven't been knocked upside their head that much. Because David, the ones on the phone, I mean, he got mad one night, walked out the house, knocked down my <laughs> blinds and... Wow. And, and cussed us out DJ and, Yes you did Did yeah. you not son <laughs> Yes and, But the key that 
did this, and I want I, I would like for all parents to understand this. David Jr. called his daddy, Daddy, come and get me, or I'm coming home. Now, you know what his daddy said to him? I'm talking to the audience right now. His daddy said, no, son, you cannot come home. You get back in that program, he would not go and get him. That was the key to his turning. But you know what we did to him? We didn't take him back in the program. I put him up in the motel for the night. David, seeing you here, I'm not doing nothing. Right. I ain't sending you no money. I don't know where you're going to sleep for the night. I put him in the motel. The next morning, I took him to Salvation Army, and I told him, you stay there, and when you, if you want to come back in 30 days, see what that's like. In 30 days, we went to see him. And he was, I'm ready to come back. Wow. David, well, you're on the phone. What would you like to say? I'm sorry, what was that? What, what, what would you like to say? All that, all that is true. Hmm. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if my dad hadn't have been as strong as he was and firm in his stance, in his position as a parent, um, there really is no telling where I might be, you know? And everything happens for a reason. I stayed in the Salvation Army for a month. That month that I was in Salvation Army is what allowed me to get independent status as a student and uh, reap financial benefits as a, as, a, as a student. So, like I said, everything happens for a reason, and I appreciate everything that has happened in the way that it's happened. Well, I want you to hang on the phone because when we come back, um, we're going to take a quick break. I would like for each one of you, Tracy, um, Clifford, and you too as well, David, to give your best advice. There's so many people that are suffering. They, a lot of them reach out to me. I redirect them to you as often as I possibly can because I don't really have those kinds of answers. But I really want them to hear it from the mouth of someone who suffered. It's not the same tone until they hear it from you. We'll be right back. It's time to play the Marla and Dave. Oh, this is going to be love. fun. You're going to play game. the love game. Here are right Marla and Dave game. to explain how it works. Okay, we're going to play the Mad Love Game, a game created by Marla and I, the Marla and Dave of the Marla and Dave Show. And it has three categories. Marla, what are the categories? Thank you, Hal. <laughs> oh, I'm Hal now? No. Hal, <laughs> Hal does our introduction, but you, you, you're, you're so quickly, be, you're losing your Vanna White. It's over for you. Uh, now I'm Hal and Vanna White. No, okay. Yeah, right. okay, so the, the, the categories are communication, uh, money, Finance and sex. Sex. Components like of a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, Tracy, would you mind rolling the dice? The die has uh, three the three categories on it. It also has lose a turn and it has the mad logo, logo which is the wild uh, option. And you can choose whatever you want to. The wild card, right. Yeah. Tracy, roll that dice. D, you're not in right this. There. We don't play sex games with our son. <laughs> lose a turn. So we go move on to Freddie. <laughs> Freddie, roll the dice. Oh, it's on sex. Oh, this is going to be good. It's hot. Hey, DJ, uh -oh. David, earmuffs. Go ahead. <laughs> the question is, what has more nerve endings? Now, we get pretty graphic here because sex is a graphic thing. It's Though nice. it's intimate. Uh, what has more nerve endings, the clitoris or the head of a penis? The clitoris. Hmm. Tracy, what do you think? <laughs> What was okay. that question? What has penis. more nerve endings, the clitoris or the head of a penis? Oh, me, me, 500. The head of a penis. Okay, we got one clitoris, one penis. <laughs> Cliff, what do you think? I'll go with the penis. He's going with the penis. Marla? <laughs> I'll take I'll take clitoris, please, for 500, Dave. <laughs> DJ, don't laugh. You're not in this. The clitoris has twice as many nerve endings as the penis. And women win again. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have a little bit of time left. Uh, here's a... And we always have a question for further discussion. So if you're playing this with your friends, you can gather around. Uh, it's a good discussion tool. Are most female orgasms clitoral or vaginal? Oh well, I can't speak for that. Uh, that would be it. Would be clitoral. Well, that, it, it would be clitoral if, if all the nerve endings are there. Then duh. I mean, you got you know you go to the nerve <laughs> to get the response. Okay, Freddie, do you uh, <laughs> I concur? Agree. Okay. <laughs> So what? So here's another one. Which uh, type of orgasm is more enjoyable, clitoral or vaginal? What? Okay, I have to say this. I'm, I'm going to take Freddie off the hot seat. I think that when it comes to, it's really, everybody's different, but it's about the relationship. It's the relationship that you have 
with this man that you enjoy oh, everything about it could, it could be just a holding hands or a soft kiss hey, man we it might have, have to, to take be. a little break marlon and i will be right back <laughs> i never do anything without thinking about it first marla is a feeler i basically wear my personality on my scene but when marla and dave get together it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. So right quick, um, because as we bring our show to a close, we cannot leave, number one, without uh, sharing more information about how to contact DAP, how we can donate and, and contribute to DAP. But before we even go there, because we're going to close with that, I want to ask Tracy first, what advice right now to somebody Short, who's quick listening? Answer. My, my best advice is to you to always uh, be open about what's going on with yourself. Uh, do not be in denial. You know what I'm saying? Always, always keep in mind that you're not there by yourself. Someone has been through where you've been through and got the answer. So always seek out the answer. You know what I'm saying? Don't think you got it. You can do this thing by yourself. Okay. I think the best thing for you to do is be for real with yourself. Look at yourself. Think about what you are going through. What pain you, that's happening with you. David? Best advice? You know, the funny thing is, I'm sitting here listening to Tracy and, and, and Dad. I'm really thinking that is the most honest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. You can't change a situation until you can change your perspective about where you are. I think um, being honest with yourself is, that's it. That's really the only thing that I can say, my, my only advice. Is that hard for you to do as a young person, D? Because you, you're, you're a miracle. Um, as you oh, recovered, oh, definitely. you recovered um, from an actual heroin addiction, and you are 25, and you 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 made that decision for yourself at 21. So, is it the same for somebody in your age group? Um, I think it might be a little bit harder for somebody my age, simply because we see all these things in the media that to glorify a lifestyle that really isn't realistic for a young person. But yet and still, we see young people living this life, so we kind of are, in some ways, not forced, but are more likely to want to put on a persona or put on a false representation of who we are in public and, and try to put on a mask in public simply because we want to be viewed at, as somebody that is a cool person or somebody that is has mass appeal within society. So, yes, I do feel like that is harder for a young person simply because of the pressure that is put on to be, I don't know, to be viewed at as, as successful, I guess. All right. Um, well, Dave, and, thanks and, for calling in, buddy. We yeah, love you, man. for sure. We love you. We love you, Dave. Um, I love and, you. And and Freddie, I'm going to I'm going to leave it with you. Um, but, and before we even do that right quick, I just want to we had a poll question and the question that, you know, this is on the verge of breaking for our society and it says this week's poll question will the legalization of marijuana and other drugs promote addiction and our answer possibilities are a yes it's a death sentence b no addicts are addicts what's the result Dave? uh the results were 60 percent said yes it's it's oh, a death sentence good. and only 40 percent said no addicts are addicts so you know it's a it's an issue that we have to deal with unfortunately and so I want to leave it with Freddie. So what, what's your advice and how do people um, get on and, and how can we encourage people to help with DAP? Okay, I can give you our uh, website. is www.drugalternativeprogram.com and our email is dapcalif at aol.com. Our telephone number is 909-783-1094. And we're also on Facebook. So how, how, what, what is it today, if you had to reach out to all those who are listening, how can we best help? Is it donations to, to yes, help you know, with we, the program? Most of our guys, say 80% or 90% of our guys that come to the program have no money. And we don't turn anyone away for mm. no funds. So our great, great need right now is sponsorship for these guys that come into the program. And so how can someone actually, do they just do that by going to your website, you going go to, to Facebook? Website, Facebook? We are we are a nonprofit organization, right. so you can write donations off of 
you know, your for taxes. your taxes. And I'll let everybody know right there at www.marlindave.com all month. We will have their information there and I'll put a link up that goes directly to a way that people can con- contribute directly to DAP. And, you know, I want to say thank you both. Mm. Yes. yes. Thank you both to helping us in DAP that we can help that funds can generate to help other men who are coming into the program. Well, we definitely owe you. As far <laughs> and, as we're concerned, we owe you the, the life that, of our son. Yes, Trust me. Definitely. It's God, not me. <laughs> so the poll question this week you'll be able to find on our website. Um, remember, you can always ask Marlon Dave. If you don't ask us, then we can't tell you. That's the bottom line. We want to thank Cliff, Freddie, and Tracy for joining us today. We had a great discussion. Yes, you know, yes. sometimes when dis- discussions are so good, seems like they just, it's too short. And it's a it's definitely a mad world. And so, Dave. We have to talk about it. Let's talk about let's it. Let's talk about we'll it. We'll see you guys see here you guys next, next week. week.